What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of DLB TV. I'm your host DLB as always. Make sure you guys check out our website, dlb-network.com. This episode, um, I I've been talking to a lot of gamers out there. And, you know, we got these next-gen consoles coming. You know, my prediction, I'm, I'm feeling real good. I'm feeling that they're going to launch this year. And there's a few people who are like, you know what? I'm confident in Sony. I'm going in. Doesn't matter what it is. That's me. I'm that person. I'm going to buy the PS3 no matter what they offer, no matter what they say. I will be getting that console because there's games that I want to play. But I'm a multi-console owner, so I don't know if I count. What I mean by multi-console owner is I, I always get them all. I eventually will be getting the Wii U. I'll be getting whatever Microsoft offers, and I'm going to be getting, obviously, whatever Sony offers. But my question to you guys, and the conversation that I want to have with you guys today, is there's a lot of gamers that I know who are sitting on the fence, who don't know what console they want to get. So, it, and, and, though, and they're mainly PlayStation gamers. For the most part, people that own a 360, they kind of know what they want. They kind of are going to go with the 360 again. May get a PS3 as their second console, but a lot of them are comfortable with what Microsoft offered them this current generation with the Xbox 360. But I've noticed a lot of PlayStation 3 gamers, a lot of people that only own the PlayStation console, a lot of one console owners are kind of sitting on the fence. And rightfully so, because th this generation, I, I, I think it's, all, it's safe for us all to say and assume, or not even assume, but just know that this was one of Sony's worst consoles that they've ever launched. I mean, from the time that they launched the console, announced the price at $600, or you know, starting off at $499, the high-end one was $599. And then you had the whole issue with, you know, there was, you know, the, the, the infamous E3 2005 conference where they're talking about two HDMI plugins for dual displays, your PSP being able to work as a rear view mirror for Gran Turismo and, and, and showing off kill, the CG trail as a kill zone and, and uh, of resistance and motor storm and making the PlayStation Nation believe that this is the type of games we were going to be playing at the launch of the console and the console launches and you know those games are nowhere to be seen Killzone didn't come out so light years later and they did get close to the CG footage but it, it was nowhere near it it still to this day is it I mean you can after you finish watching my video you can go look on YouTube right now and and look at the you know the conference and nothing that I'm saying is lying so they made all these all these promises and just never delivered on them like the PlayStation I was supposed to be HD or I remember they said it would your PlayStation I was supposed to be wireless and you could leave it anywhere in the house and you'd be able to access your PlayStation I you know whether you were in across the country or just a lot of bogus stuff and then you look at the Vita the Vitas came out to me it's way overpriced uh, you can't see your Vita friends from your PlayStation 3 console, which is crazy to me. It's like, how do you sit in a boardroom with your with, with a bunch of executives or whomever, developers, whoever, you're doing all this 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 uh, this research and development, and nobody sits back and says, "Hey, I can't see people who are on the Vita for my PlayStation." What kind of bogus stuff? It like it, it's just just little small things like that. Or, you know, the PSN was down for almost a month. So, this generation has been very rocky. The PS Vita has given me somewhat of hope what to expect from the next PlayStation. But, at the same time, it still makes you wonder, like, what the hell is Sony doing? Perfect example. You turn on your PS3. I'm on my Vita. You're like, hey, DLB said he's online. What you have to do, you can scroll all the way down your friends list, and at the bottom, if you see the little circle, like your friend, like I'm loading up, you know, okay, that person's on the Vita. You shouldn't have to go through all that to tell if somebody's on their Vita. These are two PlayStation consoles. Why do they both feel like a separate experience? Like, on my Vita, my Vita's fine. I can see you if you're on a PS3, I can see what you're playing, trophy list, so on and so on. But on the PS3, you can't see people who are on their Vita. Then, with a game like Sound Shapes, uh, Motor Storm RC, um, and, a, and a couple of other games, uh, they just uh, launched Jetpack Joyride uh, for free. If you get a trophy on the PlayStation, and then you turn on 
your your Vita or vice versa, you get that same gold trophy twice or that same platinum trophy twice. Like, I don't understand. It's like you have two separate trophy systems that come together as one. So I get a trophy on my PS3, I get a trophy on my Vita. Now you trophy yours out there, you guys may enjoy that. But it, the, what I'm looking at is this should be a seamless experience. If I get a trophy on my PS3, I don't get a double trophy. I should just be able to see that this trophy has already been achieved on the PlayStation console. So it, it, things like that, it, it, it's crazy to me. So, you know, I pray Sony gets their stuff together. There's an interview with Kasurai. Uh, and he, I love Kasurai as a CEO, he's very honest and very upfront, and he clearly stated, he was like, you know, we have to get our stuff together, and we have to focus. We have to focus in on the core roots of our business, and PlayStation being one of those core roots. In another interview with the, uh, with the Wall Street Journal, he was, uh, he stated um, that, that finally, somebody being honest, he was like, you know, our PS... Our, our, our PSV to sales aren't meeting our expectations. Sony is really missing that aggressiveness. Why, if, you, if it's not meeting expectations, why not lower the price? So, it, so you can get it into more gamers' hands. Like, the handheld market isn't what it once was. I mean, it is for Nintendo because they're selling 3DSs like hotcakes. But it's funny that Nintendo is more aggressive than Sony. The 3DS... Wasn't selling well. What did they do? Price drop. Instantly. I never would have expected anything like that from Nintendo. It was quick. They were like, yo, this isn't selling? Price drop. Sony's not doing that same thing. I don't understand it. But this could go on forever. But this is the reason why a lot of PlayStation gamers are sitting on the fence and they're giving Microsoft a fair chance this time around. They're like, you know what? I am a huge PlayStation gamer, I am a part of the PlayStation nation, but this time around, Sony, because of what you've done, there's a lot of gamers that are sitting back now, and if Microsoft plays their cards right, they could get a lot of new console owners this generation. So you guys leave me a comment. Let me know how you guys feel. Are you guys on the fence, or do you guys already know that you're going to be getting the next PlayStation? Are you kind of sitting there like, you know what? Let me see what's going to happen. I don't know which console I'm going to get. Talk to me, people. Make sure you guys check out the website, dob-network.com. Also, check out the podcast. Until the next video, I'm your boy, DLB, and I'm out. Peace.